All right, so our board is pretty much done. Uh, we've got both of the ground planes on both the top and the bottom, and all our traces are routed. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do a design rules check by going tools and then update DRC. And it says that there were no DRC errors detected, so that's good. Uh, another good thing to do is to run an unconnected pins report. Um, you can do that with tools, reports, and then scroll down to unconnected uh, pins report, double click it, and then just press generate reports. And we can see that there's zero unconnected pin pairs. So that's uh, essentially how many remaining blue lines are left that we have yet to route. So we just wanted to make sure that we have routed everything and it looks like we have. So one last thing that I want to do to this board before we uh, export our files for manufacturing is I just want to add my name to the bottom left. Um, so I can do that with the text tool and I'm just going to go and increase this text block over here to like size six. Um, and that's a pretty good size. And then down in the bottom left, I'll just put my name. I'll hit done. And then I want to right click on it and I just want to make sure that it's on the edge and the top layer, just so that way it's going to be etched on the top side of our board in copper. So to make sure that this text actually shows up on the final PCB, um, as right now, it looks like it probably won't because these lines uh, all have zero width right now. These lines are very thin. So there's not really gonna be any copper left, um, left there to actually show the text. So we can fix that if we go to setup and then design parameters, and then go to this text tab and press the dot, dot, dot near setup text sizes. And we used text block six. So we just wanna make the width of the lines on text block six about 10 mils. So we'll press okay and then apply. And we can see that it gave, um, it gave these uh, text lines some thickness here. All right, so now that I've got my name etched into the bottom of the board, um, and I've made sure that it's on the top layer and I've got all my traces uh, routed, it looks like we're ready to manufacture our Gerber files. So to do that, we're going to go up to Manufacture and Artwork, and then we'll right click in here and we'll do Add Manual. And we'll type in Outline, and then we'll select the, um, the Design Outline layer from the Board Geometry class, and press OK. And then we're going to go through each of these, and we want to make sure that the undefined line width is set to 10 mils, just in case. Um, this will uh, also make sure that the text, if you forgot to do the other step, um, the text will show up because uh, it will, will increase the line width of the text from 0 to 10. Um, so once that's done, um, we're just going to select all of these layers and press Create Artwork. Then press OK. Um, we need to do one additional thing, which is to generate the file uh, for where all the drill holes are going to go. So there's going to be a different step of the process that drills all the holes in the PCB. And so we can do that by doing Manufacture, NC, and then NC Drill. We're just going to call it something generic like drill.drl. Uh, we'll make sure Auto Tool Select is checked, and then we'll press Parameters. We'll unselect automatically create drill and see route bits auto, and we'll also check the box that says enhanced Exelon format, and then we'll press OK. Just press drill, and it should generate the files. Um, so if you look in the, um, the, the folder in your cadence directory, you'll see it generated um, several files. It generated top.art. It also generated um, drill.drl, and we're going to use the second one of those. Um, and then it generated bottom.art and also outline.art. So I'm gonna go ahead and send those to a zip file, and I'm just gonna call it Gerbers. So we wanna to check to make sure that our manufacturer Gerber files are manufacturable at Peralta Mills, and we can do that with an application called DFM Now. We'll just do File, Import, and then Compressed File, and we'll navigate to the Cadence directory and we'll select the, um, the PCB that we just made. It'll give us some layer options, which are okay by default. And this is the board as we've manufactured it in Cadence. Um, we can see all the holes are there. Um, we'll just do DFM check and then DFM rules management to make sure that the Peralta mill spec uh, .drf file is loaded in as the DFM rule set. Um, this rule set is essentially just a list of rules um, that define the manufacturing constraints for how this board is manufactured. Um, so as long as it passes all these rules, it should be manufacturable at Peralta. We'll just press finish and we'll do DFM check, DFM check, and press next. So it looks like this is not exactly the, um, the, the result that we wanted. We got some of these level, uh, these, these critical warnings. 
Um, and these are manufacturing problems. Um, it tells us what they are, but not where they are. It says that there's minimum annual ring drill pad violations. So that's telling us that in eight places on this board, um, these uh, the holes are uh, generally going to be too small for um, the drills. So the drill is it put, could potentially drill through the whole piece of copper that's there, and there could be no pad remaining is what that's essentially saying. Um, so because DFM now doesn't tell us where these errors are, we kind of have to guess and then run additional DFM checks. And so this is where it might be useful to number things, to number your files. Um, I think these pads right down here might um, be some of the problems just because they're so small. Um, so I'm going to go back to Cadence and I just want to look at which they are. So I'm going to do uh, Tools, Pad Stack, and Replace. And then I'm going to click on one of these pad stacks to see what it is. This is TM Axial LLB Pad 2. Um, I want to just replace all of these pad stacks, all these uh, TM Axial LLB Pad 2 pad stacks, with a pad stack that I know is manufacturable because I made it myself. So I'm going to press this dot 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 next to new, and I'm going to scroll down and select one of the pad stacks that I've made that I'm confident can be manufactured at Peralta. And then I'll just press replace. And I can see it's replaced all of the pad stacks throughout my drawing um, with this new octagonal pad stack. And I'm pretty confident that that one can be manufactured at Peralta. So we can go ahead and try this again by uh, manufacturing some new Gerber files. And to do this, I would recommend uh, going through and deleting your old Gerber files first. All right, so I'll do manufacture artwork. And I'll select all of them and press create artwork. And then I'll do Manufacture, NC Drill, and I'll press Drill. And then I'll go and I'll send all of these new Gerber files into a new Gerber file zip. So I'm going to recheck this design in DFM now. I always recommend to completely exit and reopen DFM now. Um, this is just because of what I think is a glitch in DFM now. So this may be different if you have an updated version. I'll go ahead and run my DFM check again by doing DFM check and then DFM check and pressing next. And I see that that pad stack modification fixed all of my DFM errors. Um, so this PCB is ready to be manufactured at Peralta Mill.